going on guys welcome to another video and this one's actually gonna be a tarkov rant well i guess not really a rant but more of uh i'm excited it's been a while i don't know i'm excited this new wipe and the point 14 content update got me pretty jazzed i don't know it's just gonna be good i already know some of y'all gonna be inclined it's like oh, Clint, you don't fucking play tarkov anymore you don't have you why are you excited bro go fucking you know. fuck you i love this game like all things anything in excess is quite annoying as somebody who actually plays tarkov and has played it a lot probably a lot more than most of you talking shit point 14 is by far like the most exciting patch to date for me like ever for eft and we'll kind of get into why i mean the first notable thing is obviously the tarkov streets expansion tarkov streets is the best map hands down uh, used to be a reserve main. Well, that all changed when Streets came out. And now that map is about to get bigger and better. And I can't fucking wait. It's going to be awesome. There's also going to be BTRs on Streets. So we're going to have a really super awesome cheeky breaky up armored taxi that has a 30 millimeter cannon that we're going to be able to hopefully use and kill our enemies with and also blow away some scabs. That sounds fucking sick. That's awesome. There's also going to be some bosses on Streets. Multiple bosses, in fact. And that's pretty awesome because, well, the boss on Streets is going to be... A fucking monster. He's gonna have a fucking belt-fed machine gun, an RPD and a PKM machine gun. That's gonna be pretty fucking sick. It's also gonna be very scary trying to fight those fuckers because we all know that Tarkov bosses and AI are pretty fucking cracked. And I don't like the idea of having to fight a guy that has a hundred rounds of SNB in a box magazine on a fucking belt-fed. So hopefully we'll get our hands on that weapon and be able to fucking mow some people down. I personally don't think the belt-feds are really gonna be like super solo friendly weapons i feel like those are going to be things that will likely be best used in a squad you know like having that automatic rifleman or support player who's you know kind of covering fire and holding down angles and shit pretty badass honestly um but more than anything not so i could really care less about the content i mean it's just it's the cherry uh on the cake for this update for me but more than anything man it's the fucking gameplay changes baby these are the only things that really get me excited about new eft patches is because New guns, cool. New maps, cool. New bosses, whatever. Gameplay? The way that we have to fundamentally play the game differently, and we have to kind of relearn and learn new metas and mechanics, like, that's the shit that I like. And the biggest, one of the biggest ones, because there's actually, like, multiple, like, really big gameplay changes in this update. One big one, and that's for uh, the movement gamers out there, is the vaulting and climbing and mantling. No more are the days of, at least I hope, like, a fucking pizza box is on the ground and you can't walk over it. You know, hopefully your character will just be able to step over that shit. But being able to, like, climb over fences, and like climb up over walls and like climb into windows properly without having to do like weird crouch jump jankiness you know we've all been on customs level one strength trying to get into the two-story dorm first floor bathroom and you fucking do it like five times and you're out of stamina next to the trash bags and you're starting to think am i actually trash because i can't jump through this fucking window or is this game trash it's the game not you don't worry but hey, vaulting, that'll be awesome so hopefully we won't really have that damn problem anymore and we'll be able to climb right through those windows that's that's honestly so sick. I'm, I'm really excited about that. This is another big one. Uh, armored plates for the body armor and rework of the hitboxes. So no longer are the days where slick is meta and these body armors that basically expose areas of your body, like your rib cages and armpits and shoulders, like sick. Like it means makes all armor viable. And a lot of you guys are going to say, well, I won't be able to run my slick anymore. And like people are going to run hollow point vector and one tap me in the chest. I'm like, yeah, they will. But guess what? That also makes like PACA really viable. It also makes Karasa really viable and pretty much a lot of the other armors that are only useful like maybe the first week of the wipe will continue to be useful because a lot of players will likely be running like high flesh damage damage in their in their you know weapons uh, and they'll be aiming for those weak spots on the body and that's just kind of something that is going to increase the danger and lethality of everything. It'll kind of make it to where all ammo will be good in pretty much all situations depending on the context of what armor and helmet somebody has and uh, as somebody who remembers when the the head hitbox was first introduced like that was a massive game changer and completely shifted the dynamic and the meta of the game and now like you know armor hitboxes bro that's i i think it's great i think it's awesome uh world war 3 was the only game i've ever played that actually did something like that if you don't know what world war 3 is it was kind of a game that tried to do what battlefield did but kind of didn't and died uh but they had a cool armor system in that where there's like plates and you could like shoot around the plates and there's different types of plates you could choose from which is something that will come uh to eft eventually after this update where you'll be able to customize the plates in your armor as well as on your chest rig but who knows maybe we could get some of those mechanics this update we'll see uh but again body armor hitboxes and and new plates for body armor i just 
I think that's so freaking cool. It's going to shape up the meta a lot. I'm really excited to see how this plays into the game. Uh, we're finally getting kit presets. You know, we have weapon presets. Now we can have presets for our entire loadouts now. So that's just going to save us so much time because really one of the worst things about EFT is the fact that like we're in the menu like a lot too much in fact and you go from being able to play and then you're you know sitting in a menu and then you have to like wait to get into a match then you're in a match and that just whole flow just kind of fucks things up like nobody wants to be organizing stuff in the menus and granted I love inventory Tetris just as much as the next hardcore gamer but not a lot of people do and a lot of people would rather focus on playing the game rather than getting ready to go into the game and then matching, you know, so having this kit preset is really going to save a lot of time and a lot of fucking menu clicks through the traders and stuff. And that's really awesome. Uh, another one is weapon animations interacting with cover. I actually have a video on this. I believe I made that video a couple months back, but basically it's like the way the weapons collide uh, in Tarkov are very weird. Uh, I'll actually get up and grab a rifle real quick and just kind of show you what I mean. So this is this is actually my car 15 SD uh, replica. Um, just for those guys running where the gun is. Um, and so in Tarkov right now, the, the way the weapon collision works, like say if you're bumping into something, what ends up happening is it goes like this. Your guy just goes like this, like up, and then his gun is down like this. And it looks really awkward. And when he goes down, he does, he does like the weird, you know, whatever the fuck he does when the weapon's like colliding on stuff. And it just looks super goofy. And what's most likely going to happen now is we're, I'm hoping we're going to get what is uh, called high cheeking, where you actually bring the rifle up to your cheek when you're close. So you can actually see over the top of your gun this way. And then you'd be forced to a low ready or you do kind of what we currently have, where you go under your armpit like this, but then it forces you to a high ready, which are real positions that people use in gunfights IRL. And um, it's, it's frankly how you're supposed to manipulate your weapon around cover. You know, you're not able to just do this and be able to glide your muzzle across every surface or wall. You know, it's just uh, kind of unimmersive and it looks like shit. A game that does this very well is actually Ready or Not. If you guys have ever played that game, really cool tactical shooter and the way the weapon collision works in Ready or Not is fantastic. And if it's anything like that, uh, I'm going to be super happy. Really, really cool feature. And I'm really glad that this is finally coming in just because I know it's going to hopefully punish very long weapons because that's always been my issue with the way the collision system works right now in EFT is that long weapons are not awkward to use in close quarters. They should be. You should be forced to a higher low ready if you have a 30 inch rifle. Like that's just how it should be. If you have a P90, you should have the advantage in a CQB situation and be able to barrel stuff people and be very aggressive and kill them. Like you could literally run into them and force their gun to a higher low ready and then shoot them in the face because you have a smaller weapon. That just makes sense. And it also finally gives a counter, like I said, to long weapons when in reality in Tarkov, there aren't really any. You run broomsticks for like every meta weapon and there's literally no con to, to doing that. And yeah, I'm just, again, I'm really excited to see that. I'm gonna go put this back on the wall. On top of more like cool weapon manipulation mechanics, we also have shoulder swapping. Fuck, I actually shouldn't have put my rifle away. Should be easy enough to explain, but basically we all know what right hand peaks are in Tarkov because in Tarkov the uh, bullets don't come out of the center of the screen. They come out of the muzzle or barrel of the weapon, which is always on our right side. Now we're going to be able to switch that weapon to our left side and give it left side peekers advantage now. Uh, we all know like the right side peak who play this game enough and, you know, a lot of the meta of Tarkov and is... You basically like move to a position to get another right side peak because that's the safest and tightest angle to expose minimal amounts to your body while being able to stay aggressive and get your muzzle around a corner to be able to fire. And so the fact that we can finally swap shoulders is fantastic because now it's just going to hold add a whole new element to gunfights in EFT. It's going to add a whole new layer of a skill ceiling to the game and how you swing corners and stuff. It's really cool. Again, super excited. There's just like so many super awesome juicy gameplay things to to talk about um and i'm just i'm i'm just um i'm jonesing over here dude i'm so excited uh so we have a hideout expansion so there's gonna be like more stuff with the hideout I, i'm not totally sure exactly what that entails but it basically I, at least i hope it means we're gonna get these sub modules in the hideout uh it, nikita talked about this in the past and basically like your workbench and your toilet and all this other stuff will have different sub categories within that main module that will have different purposes and so this could be something like that. I don't really know. It's just an assumption. So that's pretty cool. There's another big one too. And this one is more for like general raid to raid gameplay and map flow. And that's randomized loot containers. Randomized loot containers. So basically every container that we've ever looted, that little box on top of the roof of dorms or 
you know, we go to the stronghold in customs and there's like those logistic cases there or whatever, like those are going to get moved around now and they're not always going to be in the same spot. And so now um, the, the dynamic of our loot runs is going to completely change because even Jaeger stashes too will likely be randomized and they won't be in the same spots anymore. So like those of us who, I mean, I, I've done tons of Jaeger runs, I'm guilty of it, but we won't be able to have that like same loot route anymore. It'll be gone. We'll actually have to really thoroughly explore the raids and kind of go in locations that we normally wouldn't go to because we know there's no loot there. Now with these randomized containers, it's really going to encourage a lot more thorough expo exploration throughout each raid. And I, I think that's awesome because this means that people are going to be going to places they normally wouldn't go to. And it would just make every raid feel more dynamic in terms of player traffic. And so I just I think that's so cool. Um, another big gameplay change as well is the reworked recoil. Um, if you guys haven't seen a video called The Slip, it's basically talking about how it, you know what? I should probably grab my gun for this again. Got the uh, SR25 this time. You guys have probably used this in Tarkov, personally one of my favorite guns. What the slip is, is basically in Tarkov, the way the recoil mechanics work is when, when you're shooting your gun and the way the gun recoils, it's as if your stock um, is doing this. Look at my shoulder. So the, the way that the recoil like handles is it, it basically, the muzzle goes up, but then the stock goes down and we lose like sight picture, the sight picture goes up and it feels kind of weird. And that's why I've always never really liked the recoil in EFT because it's just like, that's just not how guns feel. Again, it just, it feels like the, sh the stock and the point of contact here doesn't exist and the gun just goes down like this. And this is the weird reset point where in reality it should be going back and up like this. You know what I mean? Again, there's a really, really awesome video called The Slip. Uh, I can't remember the name of the YouTuber. Good YouTuber, but he, he made this video and I actually sent this to Nikita a while ago, I want to say like four or five months ago, and he watched and he's like, you know what, this guy's some really good points. And he's like, I never even realized this. So now we're getting a rework of recoil weapon mechanics for all types. So like the way recoil works in Tarkov will have some kind of permanent change. And I'm, again, super excited to see what this is like, because again, recoil in EFT just kind of sucks. Like it just, it doesn't feel that great. Um, not a huge fan of like the auto compensation and stuff. So I'm really keen to see exactly what they do. And um, you know, what this means for the game and how it's going to kind of shape the meta. We're going to go put this SR25 back. Another new mechanic is a uh, quick pistol transitions. I'm not totally sure exactly how this mechanic's going to work, but uh, I mean, at, already it's faster to switch to a sidearm than reloading in Tarkov currently, but I think this means that we're going to get some kind of buff to that. Maybe this means that certain holsters that we get or whatever are actually going to, or maybe even pistol grips or whatever are going to kind of increase the speed at which we switch, which is, you know, pretty awesome. Like, that's pretty sick. So again, encouraging people to bring in sidearms. And this is something that I've personally talked about a lot is that if you're playing Tarkov, like bringing a pistol, like you put 300,000 rubles in a damn rifle, but you won't put 20K in a handgun to bring with you in raid. Like I've had so many situations where having that handgun on me, like literally saved my life. Uh, another really, really awesome change coming to this update that I'm again, super excited about is suppressor durability sound variations and subsonic ammunition. So before you guys get the whole actually clean suppressors don't have durability IRL, blah, 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 blah. I know, I think we all, like those of us who shoot guns, we know that suppressors don't have durability IRL, but it's a good gameplay mechanic and suppressors frankly are pretty overpowered in EFT and always have been. Not only the, the best items for recoil because you get the double stacked recoil stats of a compensator and a suppressor on the gun, which makes it quiet and have the lowest recoil. It also doesn't sound like a suppressed rifle IRL and that kind of bugs the shit out of me because when you're shooting a projectile that's faster than about 312 meters per second it's going to break the sound barrier and when you're shooting out of a suppressor that's something that you should still be able to hear across the map so a suppressed m4 versus an unsuppressed m4 would be able to be heard from the same distance but they would just sound differently and that's what these changes are suggesting are going to happen is that subsonic ammo so if you're using subsonic ammo in a 545 AK, that means when you shoot it, it's gonna sound like how it does currently, where you're only really gonna be hear the impacts of the rifle uh, being shot. And that if you were to say use BP ammo or anything that's like going like 800 meters per second or faster, like you're gonna hear those gunshots across the map. It's just, it's just gonna sound different. And overall, this is gonna just be better for the game because it gives a bigger reason to use subsonic ammo to stay like more covert and quiet. And two, it also um, is gonna, you know, just, Get more fights in general like you're you're gonna know where people are at based on like their uh the, the report of their weapon 
which just again is awesome. And, and this is also gonna increase the overall immersion in, entirely, which I, I just think is really cool. And I'm, you know, I'm super keen for this again, like all of these really, really awesome gameplay changes to really look forward to, it's gonna be sick. Uh, another one is ammunition loading interface. I don't really know what this means. Uh, maybe it's just like how we can like pack magazines. I know we have the right click like load ammo type, but maybe this means we'll be able to like save presets for how we pack mags because like sometimes I'll put tracers at the bottom of my magazine so that I, you know, know like if I see tracers coming out of my gun, I got to reload soon because in high stress situations, you might not really be thinking of that. Um, or it might even mean the fact that we can get animations for reloading magazines so we can actually walk around and pack mags instead of having to sit in a corner with our inventory open and you know, pack our mags, or maybe even it means other people can hear us pack our magazines. I'm not totally sure what this means, but obviously it's an improvement somehow, some way to the way that we load up, load up mags. So pretty cool. Uh, new feature called sight bright, bright, brightness adjustment. So not only be able to switch the reticle on some scopes, but you'll, you'll also be able to brighten and dim the reticle itself. So you'll be able to, you know, dim or brighten the reticle depending on the situation, the lighting uh, that you're in. So if it's like a nighttime raid and you know, your optic is very bright under your night vision. You'll be able to like dim that down to make it not as bright so that you can see past the reticle easier, which is obviously really important. So really awesome, cool quality of life change. Uh, user interface rework, uh, pretty general. Like I'm not totally sure what that entails, but obviously this means that we're gonna get some reworks to the user interface to make it more user friendly, I hope. Uh, there's quest rebalancing coming in. Again, this could mean a number of things. We don't really have a lot of specifics here. But uh, hopefully this means that quest rewards will make a little bit more sense, quest progression, because it's always been a little uh, iffy. So kind of excited to see what comes of this. This is another big one. Rebalancing of levels, skills, and mastering. So I don't know, again, what this entails because it's not really that specific, but in Tarkov, skills have always bugged me because like the difference between like level 50 and 51 strength is like a 200% bonus. Whereas what I would love to see is that like every five levels you get a like percentage of that max perk. So like say max strength, for example, your weapons don't weigh anything once you hit level 51. Whereas if you hit level five, your weapons weigh 5% less Then level 10, they weigh 10% less. And then 15, 20, 20, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. So that way, every time you level, you're actually getting a small perk every single time you reach that next fifth margin. And that would kind of help the newer players who don't really play as much kind of get a advantage by putting in the time and, and it just doesn't make it to where the people who put in like all the time to get max strength and you know they, they get that mega super strong perk and other really powerful perks that are at the max level of different skills and abilities uh it just kind of helps with the power creep of them and kind of keeps people a little bit more in line with each other depending on the time that they put in i don't know again i don't know if that's actually happening i'm just saying that's something i'd love to see uh, and i hope to potentially see it in this rework and I don't really know what the reworks to mastering would be. Uh, maybe that's how we gain experience or something. But again, I'm sure once we get the actual full patch notes for point 14, we'll actually know what these things are. Next, we're getting bipods and stabilizing firearms on cover. Uh, if you guys don't know what this is, obviously squad using the bipod on like horizontal cover, you'll be able to use it to stabilize your weapon or you'll be able to like brace your weapon on horizontal and vertical cover. So you'll actually be able to stabilize your rifle by putting it against cover and holding it there. Uh, Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 both have this feature. It's called uh, mantling, uh, you know, but mantling is also another reference to like vaulting, but being able to like mantle or brace your, your rifle on cover is gonna be really cool because I think that's gonna add a whole new dynamic to the gameplay. And it's also gonna shape the meta up by making it to where maybe you don't need the best in slot meta gun anymore to mitigate recoil, but if you're properly mantling and bracing your rifle on things or whatever gun you're using, you're gonna be able to get a better recoil advantage out, out of that. But the only downside being of that is you're gonna expose your 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 muzzle around a corner and then people are gonna see like, oh, that guy's like bracing his gun on a corner. You know, you can see him and it might expose you a little bit giving your position away, but still really cool mechanic. Really excited to see this too. Uh, choosing what body part to heal via hotkey. This is another fucking huge quality of life improvement because uh, currently I believe it prioritizes head, chest, stomach then limbs so arms and legs so choosing to be able to heal uh the limb specifically is going to be really nice because no longer will we be stuck in situations by healing the wrong body part because sometimes you want to heal your leg not your head even though your head has like maybe i don't know two hp taken away off it or something like that that's just really nice uh, helmet flashlights are coming in too so it's just another way to illuminate things without needing a light on your weapon I think this is another really cool addition. Not a huge like gameplay change, but again, cool, smaller addition. Meds and food consumption upon double click. I can't tell you how many times I have discarded my food and or meds because I tried to right click use. Just being able to like middle mouse button or like, you know, 
hover over whatever the meta consumable is and click a button to use it is just an awesome quality of life improvement. I That's fucking sick. I, I can't wait. That's so dope. And then lastly, we have AK-12 PKM RPD uh, SVT-40 9A91 and Underbarrel Grenade Launcher for Scar. Just some guns. Don't really have much to say about that. I mean, more guns and EFTs, you know, I don't know. It's just more whipped cream on the on the pie at the end of the day. In this, uh, we're more concerned with what's in the pie. We got a lot of gameplay stuff in here. Again, a lot of stuff to really look forward to. And I really can't wait to come back in Tarkov and check out the 0 0.14 update. Play a fresh new wipe with all of these awesome gameplay overhaul mechanics, man. I just think there's so much to look forward to here. Hopefully, whatever issues are going on with the Unity, um, with uh, EFT gets resolved from what I hear. Um, the reason why the Unity up, up, update was delayed on Tarkov is because it has to do with the way that the file packing has been changed with the newer versions of Unity. And that has kind of uh, made it a lot harder for BSG to pack things and update them. And that's why that's been going on. So anyway, I hope you guys like my breakdown of the things that I'm excited about on EFT for the 0.14 update. We'll definitely be doing a more thorough breakdown whenever we actually get more specific patch notes, whenever this update drops. Nobody really knows what it is. We do have a Tarkov TV on the 19th. So if you haven't seen that, go check out uh, the official BSG Twitter or Facebook or any official sources for Battlestate or Tarkov. And you should be able to find the specific times for that live stream. And we will definitely be watching that on Twitch. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Uh, thanks for your time. Peace out. Take care. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to the 0.14 as much as I am. And I'll see you on the next video, guys. Thanks again for watching. Peace.